Hey everyone, and welcome to this Not Quite a Mirgo Spective. Mrs. Mirgo with you today to talk about one of the games we can't stop playing, Phasmophobia. Phasmophobia is a real thing defined as the persistent and intense fear of ghosts. It can lead someone to experience panic attacks, shortness of breath, and difficulty sleeping. Well, Phasmophobia the game makes good on all of these promises. Mr. Mirgo had to watch the movie Dodgeball and sleep with a light on the first time we played. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. What? Oh! Phasmophobia was originally created by Daniel Knight, who started development in 2018. The game was called Spectrophobia back then. Spectrophobia was then renamed Phasmophobia and released on March 3rd, 2020, just in time for the COVID lockdown. <laughs> Phasmophobia at its core is a puzzle game, a terrifying puzzle game. You are a paranormal investigator trying to figure out what type of ghost is haunting a specific location. You can do this alone or with a team of up to four people. Each ghost will trigger specific pieces of equipment and you record their responses in your journal. The ghosts each have three identifying pieces of evidence that you must collect, except for the mimic, who will give you four, but only three of them count. What would a mimic have? That we don't have. Spare Because they'll show orbs anyway, but they don't count. Spare You piece of mimic. Oh my god. That was dumb. There are currently 24 types of ghosts to choose from, each with their own traits and abilities. These ghosts can and will hunt you. When this happens, you have one of five options. You can run, Keep running. Run run. hide, smoke them with incense, loop them, or give in to your inevitable demise. You cannot fight back. When was the last time you punched a ghost in the face? What the, f the front door will automatically lock when the hunt starts, so don't even think about running back to the truck. If you determine the ghost type and you haven't been eaten yet, you may leave. There are three other random optional objectives to complete if you choose to do so. That's all you have to do to beat the game. You do not exercise or vanquish ghosts. That's somebody else's job. You don't even have to clean up after yourself. Leave your equipment and your dead teammates behind. The evidence you have to collect includes freezing temperatures, an EMF level five reading, ultraviolet handprints, spirit box responses. Where are you? Bolded ear in the. Ghost writing in a journal an appearance on your dots projector, and of course, ghost orbs. Cursed items have been added to the game, making for some interesting and entertaining shenanigans. These items include a voodoo doll, tarot cards, a summoning circle, a music box, monkey paw, and the haunted mirror. They all do different things in game and will almost certainly trigger the ghost to hunt you if you aren't careful. A Ouija board is also available for you to ask the ghost certain questions. Make sure you are nice and say goodbye to the ghost when you are finished. If you fail to do this, you will be hunted, and the Ouija board will go up in flames. You can also collect bones like rib cages, skulls, and spines for some bonus cash. You are paid for each puzzle you complete so that you can upgrade your equipment as you play. The equipment is available in three tiers ranging from junk to awesome. The higher you pump your difficulty, the more you get paid. So the point of the game is simply to determine the ghost type and earn money to buy better equipment so you can keep going back again and again. It sounds like a pointless grind spelled out like that, but it's actually really fun and addictive. There are several difficulty levels to choose from depending on how brave you are feeling when you play. These include amateur, intermediate, professional, nightmare, and insanity. Challenge modes, as well as daily and weekly tasks, have been added to the game, too. 
They even have seasonal events for things like Halloween, Christmas, and Easter. Because of the simplicity of the game itself, phasmophobia really is what you make it out to be. Playing alone can be incredibly scary, but also kind of lonely. Not to mention you are doing all the legwork yourself. We have the most fun playing with friends. The type of people you play with can alter the experience. How's your arm? Like this guy. This guy loves balls. If you have some friends who don't mind spooky stuff and tend to be hilarious, invite them to play with you. You can even throw stuff at your friends after you become a ghost for some added fun. Ooh, look, a ghost cop. <laughs> Graphics are surprisingly good considering this game was originally developed by one guy. The environments are spooky and varying in size and layout. They range from small to mid-sized houses you would find in your own neighborhood, to camping grounds, a prison, a high school, and the super creepy asylum now called Sunny Meadows. The ghosts will open and close doors, throw things across the room, and pop up whenever they damn well please. Oh God! The ghost models are as horrifying as you'd expect them to be, but the investigator models still leave a lot to be desired. You can crouch, sprint, and walk with a strut for days. You can even headbang, but you have to bend at the hips to do so. <laughs> for a game that doesn't have any music to speak of, the audio design is actually pretty brilliant. There's an immediate change in atmosphere when you step into the location you're investigating. This is all thanks to the audio quality. The silence is actually very loud. Creaking doors and footsteps are overemphasized, leading you to be thoroughly freaked out wherever you are. Oh my god. Ringing phones, car alarms, and ghost events also make for some hilarious and frightening jump scares. Jesus Christ. Let's play Phasmophobia, she said. The best way to play this game is with the in-game voice chat. It simulates talking to your teammates over the radio. You can't always make out what the people are saying, and the radio will cut out while the ghosts are hunting. We should try, uh, UV. Dewey? What? UV. We should try duty. You can use Discord to chat in-game, but that's for cheaters. <laughs> this game is not overly flashy, and it's not a AAA title by any means. This doesn't take away from the fact that it's extremely fun and scary as hell sometimes. I would rate this game an 8 out of 10 for the adrenaline rush and replayability. We always enjoy it, and there is always something going on. You are rarely ever just standing around. If you are standing around, waiting for something to happen, the ever-looming threat of ghost encounters makes it feel like you aren't wasting your time. This game is one of our favorites to play together and with our friends. It is fast-paced and quick, so if you're short on time, you can still enjoy yourself. There's no long-term commitment to other people. Unlike survival games where everyone has to work together for hours to get anywhere, you can just jump in and have a good time. We go through phases where we play for days or weeks and then don't touch it for a few months, but we always come back. If you are a fan of jump scares and puzzle games, you will get your money's worth with Phasmophobia. If you like this video and you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment below if you have any funny Phasmophobia stories or have any suggestions for games we should cover next. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.